Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to another video. Uh, I'm PS. This is the video report for the demo scene month of December 2023. Uh, as usual, I gather all the news and highlights that happen in the active demo scene and I try to summarize them into this uh, video so it's easier for you to catch up and uh, be in touch with what is happening in the active demo scene throughout the different platforms. Commodore 64, Amiga, CPC, Atari, uh, modern PC, browser stuff, fantasy consoles, all of those different kind of platforms in the active demo scene uh, there are quite a few things happening uh in december so let's get right on to it uh kicking things off we have the top of the month uh category where we take a look at the latest uh, month and a half releases and uh, give you some highlights of things that you should definitely check out if you haven't uh, checked out yet uh, the biggest revelations or the two biggest revelations that happened was uh, the release of Emergency uh, by Disaster Area at the Syntax Demo Party happening in Australia on the last days of November. And then Unknown Worlds for New Generation, uh, a demo for the Lynx that was released at Silly Venture Winter Edition, Winter Edition um, in the middle of the month of December, uh, in the first, first quarter of December. Uh, the tool from Conspiracy that they've been using to uh, to release many 64Ks throughout the years also was released uh, at the end of November. And then uh, quite a few different uh, entries from uh, Comparade. This one was released outside of any compo. Uh, stuff from Experience in, um, in um, Hungary. Uh, some productions outside of any campo as usual, as I already mentioned, and some stuff from Inertia Demo Party as well. You can start seeing them here uh, a bit further down. So yeah, very packed uh, month as usual uh, in December in the demo scene. There's always a lot of different uh, releases happening. Uh, Christmas related, New Year related, so uh, it's always very packed with different things. Um, anyways, moving on to the next item on our agenda, we have to talk about uh, the demo scene related media. And the first item that I wanted to talk about was actually a clarification of something that I slightly mentioned wrongly or not completely accurately. I hadn't done my homework fully. Uh, so chips in c64 um i talked about the um, the release from format that happened which is this one you can see here uh, and i didn't know exactly what it was so this release was celebrating the release of uh, chitsynth which is uh, made by uh, plogue which i used to know them from making plogue be dual but uh, they made a few other different stuff it's an audio synthesizer company uh, they do different uh, kind of uh, soft synths and they focused a lot on emulating 8-bit uh, stuff. So they just recently released the Commodore 64 uh, emulator. They uh, emulate all all sorts of different SIDs, uh, SID chips uh, in it. Uh, so there are quite a few different uh, variants and they claim that it's like the most accurate 8-bit uh, emulator that uh, they have uh, for the SID. And you can load it on your DOS system, on Reaper or Cubase, whatever uh, you use. Um, and uh, have the, the SID sound there available for you to meddle with. I think it also plays uh, music from SIDs directly. Um, so yeah, very interesting. And to celebrate that release, they did this uh, little uh, intro. They asked Format for some help on the code and the music. And they provided some graphics uh, as well for it. So that's what Angel was celebrating. So that was uh, wrongly reported or inaccurately reported from my end on the uh, previous month. Uh, then we have a lot more stuff from Tiny called Christmas. Um, all the different... Um, I already talked a little bit about it on the, on the last video, but a few more videos came out and uh, the, the big... Um, showcase uh, of all of the different entries was also released meanwhile at tillage fx so check that out i'm going to put all the links uh, of those as well on the description below and also on the playlist as usual uh, then we had well day 11 already mentioned uh, atari 65 xe ram expansion revisited by jan beto the little video showing how to change uh, some stuff on the atari so if you are a hardware geek and want to know a little bit more about doing these kind of RAM expansions for uh, the Atari. It's a very good resource uh, to have. Um, 
Some other things that were released, uh, Trackmeister by TRBL. Um, it's mostly for people who run demo parties, usually have to play some tracked music, um, and it can be a bit weird. Usually you play XM play with full screen on the, on the views, but... Um, some people wanted a few more bells and whistles uh, than just that, so uh, TRBL did this uh, player where you can just play things full screen. Um, your your tracker formats full screen. You can also see the the sample information, which uh, if you know tracker formats, usually there's also always some information there uh, listed that is important to see. It's pretty much their readme. Um, and yeah, so nice little player that they created and hope to see it being used on some demo parties in the future. Uh, more stuff that came out, uh, there was this website created for the Commodore 64 graphics, uh, database based out of uh, CSDB. Uh, you can pretty much just uh, click a person and you see all the graphics that that person created. Which is pretty cool if you want to, you know, just see all the graphics from a specific Commodore 64 uh, uh, graphician, graphics artist. Um, so yeah, nice little uh, website that got released here. Still in development as far as I could understand, but yeah, pretty cool. Then we had uh, LFT releasing his usual uh, things, doing some... Um, music with 8-bit uh, hardware uh, in this case he did this track called in darkness hope he also did a little uh, commentary video explaining a few things that changed on his setup uh, usual uh, actually how he used um, an old power supply from the commodore 64 which is one of the things that usually breaks down the first when you're having problems with Commodore 64, he repurposed it as a pedal of some sort to, to do some changes on his Commodore 64 guitar thing that he uses. So yeah, check out those two videos as well if you have the time. Uh, then there was a making of a video given by Anticore as part of the Cable's uh, monthly meetup. Uh, he went through the production that they did for Inertia, uh, for Fast Compo Productions, the, the fake group name that they created. The name is called Ninja the Gaia. He explains the different parts and how he built them. So very good, especially if you want to learn a bit more about Cables and how to use Cables to do some demos. There are some very interesting tricks here. Uh, explained. Uh, then there was the Amiga Atari bitmap converter also being uh, released. Um, you can use it to convert stuff for for demos for Amiga and Atari. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I think it's by Leonard. Uh, so yeah, nice little command tool that you can use to convert some uh, some graphics for old school stuff. Thank you for that release as well. Very useful for uh, old school uh, development. Uh, then there was this event happening in uh, Germany called the 37C3 or 37C3. Um, it's a big hacker conference that have multiple talks about different kinds of security and uh, activism and things like that. There were a couple of talks related to the demo scene, uh, one specifically talking about the demo scene now and then, uh, given by a Lord Spreadpoint. Uh, himself. Uh, then there was um, a talk on hacking the Nintendo DSi by Parosion of K2, also a famous demo sceneer. And uh, there was this Torsten Roder person, who I don't think I ever met uh, in person, uh, but he has this project uh, trying to um, catalog disc mags. Uh, I think it's focused all around the Germany disc mags. And I think I reported about this um, one or two months ago um, because they have like this academic thing. They're doing it not just for kicks to put it online, but they have they have some academic research behind it, like trying to document uh, the texts that were released back then in magazines and also disc mags now. So they're trying to catalog the different disc mags. I think it's mostly focused around the Commodore 64 disc mag scene. But I'm curious to see how that uh, helps um, with the current disk mag maintaining projects that exist. Because there are quite a few disk mags that were released for Commodore 64, for Amiga. They are kind of like lost. Or they were released only, I don't know, in Polish. And uh, you can't really 
read unless you you know Polish, so things like that. And they're not online, so they're hard to access. There are some movements trying to recover those a little bit, but there are still a lot of discs that are just you know, you know that that disk mag existed, but you can't really read it anymore. Uh, so it would be nice to have like a more concise effort trying to unify those things. Um, I know Gargai has been doing some stuff for the PC disk mags, but uh, there are still quite a lot of them that are just completely missing. And uh, same thing for the Amiga and the Commodore 64 and other platforms. They also seem to... Uh, be a little bit uh, succumbing to bit rot, let's call it that. And talking about uh, disk mags, uh, versus number nine has just been made uh, online, versus this is, um, Amiga disk mag. They've been uh, trying to put online their older versions of uh, the articles from their older versions. And number nine has just uh, been uh, made online available uh, this month. So, yeah. That's it in terms of uh, Double Scene related media. Let's move on to the out of compo releases that happened uh, this month, starting off with some art packs that were uh, released. Uh, the Blender art pack for uh, for the Blender competition that happens semi-regularly, I think it's once every three months or something like that. Uh, they give you some keywords, you have to draw some stuff, have a deadline. Uh, in this case, the keywords were Borg, Parkour and World War Three. And they only had like four entries. It wasn't properly announced from what I understood. Uh, but yep, check out the art pack anyways. Um, then we had a new art pack by Apocalyptic Visions. Uh, not many entries, but uh, some decent quality here. Some ASCII, some ANSI uh, quality stuff. Um, then we had the Advent Calendar uh, by Mysticries that was uh, released as well. There's an executable and I think depending on the day that you are, you get a different uh, image uh, scene. I recall there used to be a PDF here with all of the different uh, ANSIs that would be released, but apparently they removed it since then. Um, Another art pack by Mystic Bees was also the December uh, pack with a lot of entries, ASCII, NC, Teletext, all sorts of different things. Huge NC column here as well to round up the things. Tower under construction. Really high quality stuff. And still in terms of art packs, we still have a few more things to show. Uh, Hermanas del Perro Magnetico from Argentina uh, also released uh, a pack with all sorts of other things. A lot of Petsky art in it, uh, some uh, ANSI, some Maski, uh, a, lot of, a lot of cool stuff. Uh, so check them as well. The nice quality stuff. Keeping the South American scene active, which is really cool. Moving on to other things. On the Commodore 64, we had quite a few little entries being released. Uh, oldies and goodies released at the small IPC Commodore 64 uh, beer meeting. Um, uh, another little release just released at the random meetup was the China, China Thai lunch demo. They went for lunch and they made a demo about it, because why not? And then we had uh, Christmas 2023 by Impact, so we're starting to get into the Christmas releases. Uh, the music uh, uh, music disc, also for the Amstrad CPC, also was released in December. Then we had uh, the Laxity a little intro also released uh, outside of any competition. So many competitions happening in December, people still release outside of competitions. It's just crazy. What else? Uh, the music disc for the ZX Spectrum, also released by the Polish ZX All Stars, also came out in December. Uh, another thing that came out was the Merry Beer Christmas by the Electronic Arts, a uh, little 64K celebrating Christmas as well. Uh, Nakaller did something similar as well, doing uh, with, with this intro called Merry Christmas. Um, what else? Uh, Impact released this uh, demo called Still the One, which got quite a few, quite a few uh, praises uh, outside of any competition as well. Uh, Glen Z by Spectrox was also released uh, outside of any competition. Then a couple of art packs were also released, Scrapbox 23 and Crapbox Minus 23 by the Electronic Knights. Uh, we had Bad Apple for the Vector 06C, which always important to have, uh, released by SVO here. Uh, new, in, new Year intro by uh, Shiro for the Atari VCS. 
Uh, Neo Nouveau by Epoch, uh, 4K executable graphics, another 4K executable graphics, but this time by NR4, uh, solar powered, also released at the end of the year, outside of any competition. A music disc by Art State, they've been releasing music discs like two every month or something. Judge, Jury and Executioner by, by Art State. And then uh, another entry by the Electronic Knights, this time celebrating the end of the year, called Junction at Hyperbora. Still time for a little invitation uh, for uh, the Aqua Party uh, event that's going to be happening in 2024. So it's released by Abyss Connection. And uh, last but not least, we have the Happy New Year for the ZX Spectrum by uh, Nobby. Um, and that's all that we have in terms of out of, power, out of competition releases. We still have a few more things that were released right on the New Year's Day, but people officially announced them as the first releases of the year. So I'm going to leave that for another video. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the different events that happened uh, throughout uh, the month in terms of demo parties uh, that uh, had actual competitions and not just random releases being put out. Uh, so Seal Adventure, we already talked a little bit about it. Meanwhile, the rest of the entries have come out. So uh, you can see uh, a few more entries uh, available now. Uh, the links for all of them are already on scene.org. Uh, special highlights to the front 156 bytes. Uh, I think I already mentioned on the previous, uh, on the previous uh, video. A very cool image by Critical and Rue. I'm going to skip a little bit on this because I think I already talked about most of these on the previous uh, month. Not previous month, but the previous video uh, still about uh, this month. A few more entries for the Atari Jaguar. Atari Lynx demo, the one that ended up having this um, Unknown Worlds entry that became quite uh, well received. Um, some stuff for the Atari ST uh, as well. Uh, very high quality ST, ST graphics as well. Some conversions here, some pixel art, more conversions. This one was definitely not converted or half converted maybe, but very interesting dithering uh, in the end. Uh, this is definitely pixel art. Very good quality. Very good quality pixel art uh, on at Silly Venture this year again. Um, a few stuff for the Atari VCS, a few things for the Atari XL XC as well. See a few of the intros here. Um, mm -hmm. The Taski competition. It's also pretty good. Demo competition. One by Buddy and PPS. Um, and some graphics as well, and the wild was won by Forever Friends by Triad. Um, so yeah, a uh, lot of good quality releases at Chile Venture as usual, the winter edition uh, in particular. And uh, let's move on to another thing because we have quite a few more other events to cover. So the next one on the menu is the Christmas One Screener competition. There are quite a few different uh, competitions happening uh, organized on the Commodore 64 uh, websites. I'm going to skim over them real fast. Uh, the Christmas win uh, Christmas One uh, One Screen thing. I mean a little bit. A few entries. Most of them was just a single image or a single screen. Organized by some Polish people, I believe. Uh, then we had the um, Christmas 2023 competition organized by Fairlight, which also had a few different entries. Um, Santa Close to Me by Onslaught One. This one, good quality graphics overall. I've already seen this Grill and Chill somewhere before. Um, now was re-released here for this competition. Music as well, some graphics. And I think this was a combined competition, but then they split it into different uh, categories because CSDB is weird. Um, so yeah. Let's 
some good quality entries. Uh, then moving on to other things still inside Commodore 64, there was this controversy, uh, con controversial uh, competition called the Wired AI Ninja Compo. So this stemmed from what I understood of reading all the drama backlog uh, here on the forums. Uh, it stemmed from this image that got third place at the 30N competition in the Canary Islands earlier in the month and this was according to many people was just a conversion and it like AI generated and then converted into a Commodore 64 uh, image might have had some retouch but people are saying that it's a conversion other people are saying oh you're just uh, flaming people who are doing new stuff uh, big drama ensues anyways uh, Hedning and the Sarge decided to organize this competition uh, to explore slash discuss uh, the the influence of the new AI technology and repurposing the wired thing. Uh, wired is this term that I didn't know about. I just learned it on the Commodore 64 scene. So apparently when you're converting something, you call it a wired graphics because it's just converted. It's not hand drawn hand pixel drawn um so they call it the wired image for reasons that i don't quite understand um so they had this competition completely dedicated to creating something with ai and converting it so either you can play along and do some actual ai images and convert them or you can subvert the concept and do some actual handmade stuff and make fun of the whole conversion stuff and they had quite a few different entries of uh, different things um some completely making fun of uh, the things like that chat gpt would never be able to replicate uh, these things properly um some images that have like very strong reference to the original image that started this whole controversy uh, and some very good quality hard work uh, along with it as well so interesting compo it's good to have some this one looks definitely converted as well one of the ideas that i had while reading this really cool uh, conversion here as well uh, I don't think this is conversion, it's probably pixel. Yeah, it looks more like pixel artwork. Um, or maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any of this. Uh, one of the ideas that I had while uh, while reading about all of this controversy at uh, at uh, for this compo was that pixel art competitions should probably start having like a time-lapse thing where you actually see the person drawing the image uh, instead of having just work stages because work stages can also be kind of faked um so it would be interesting to see pixel uh, people people actually pixeling the work and have like different screenshots of the thing but making like an animation out of it not just single work stages uh, it's probably m a lot of work to set up if you're not doing pixel work on a computer on on a modern computer like a pc on a pc you can just turn OBS on and then edit the video down to, to do time-lapse stuff. But I guess if you're pixeling directly on the Commodore 64, that's not as easy to set up. Anyway, just an idea that I had. Could be an interesting uh, thing to have in the future to have more uh, focus on or be more clear on what is converted and what is pixel drawn. So it's immediately seen as you watch the entry unfold into its final form you immediately see if it was converted or not and that might give a little bit more insight for people voting to be able to judge accordingly um anyways just an idea so moving on to other things because we still have a few other events to cover we had then the tillage effects uh, stream organized by the field effects people uh, they uh, covered they only had the single showcase uh, showing the different entries that were submitted to the showcase. They also had the showcase of the Tiny Code Christmas uh, things. Very chilled out uh, live stream. They also had the ByCham at the end. So a few different entries that were submitted, which I'm going to try to cover <coughs> real quick. Love Byte did a little trailer to start the countdown for the Love Byte 2024. Where we will have 40 different 
um, size coding things happening every single day or one every single day for 40 days. Um, a little uh, teletext image by Spini, uh, a little intro by Tobac, also something by Lex Bailey for the ZX Spectrum. Uh, Gasman presented this uh, online tool to do some sounds for the TIC-80. Uh, he did a whole video explaining how it's used. Uh, an intro by Joel Walsh. Um, a little uh, Apple II 64 byte intro as well by Marky Design. Um, some uh, music. Um, Silent Snow by Book Wyvern as well. Another size coding things. Uh, a few photos. More TIC-80 stuff. The last animation of the Ducks by the Duckman. Uh, it's good to have closure on the whole thing. I'm very curious what he will do next, though. Uh, now that he no longer has the Ducks to play around with. Uh, more photos. Uh, a fake invitation for a fake party. Uh, more music played as well. Uh, some drawn graphics. Um, an intro, a browser demo released by uh, Nico. I'm not sure what the platform was. It says browser there, so I'm going to believe it. Um, and yeah, so um, very short demo, just a one day, uh, one day demo party, just doing a live stream. They also had a bite jam uh, with some uh, different artists doing some stuff. Gasman, J Truck, Mrs. Beanbags, and Sule. So yeah. What else did we have to round up the month? We had uh, the VCC uh, competition, which is a recurring competition that's been organized by Logiker. And it's interesting in the sense that you're supposed to size code a challenge, but it's open to whatever platform you want to do. So it ends up being more interesting to see all of the different the diversity of all the different platforms and how they did it in the different platforms than actually the the actual size coding thing like the, the how much they managed to squeeze it uh the winner was our top for the zx spectrum using the z80 assembler and there were a lot of entries for the zx spectrum so a lot of entries for the commodore 64 uh, on the total, the main competition had over 200 entries, so I'm going to go quickly over a few of them. This one was uh, released outside of any compo, was for the specific um, JavaScript emulator thing. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It's a browser page where you can put some specific language and it gets interpreted into visual graphics. Uh, that do, does ASCII art. Uh, this one was released outside of a compo as well. Some stuff for like make code uh, for the logo interpreters, uh, Commodore 64, MSX, uh, VIC-20, uh, all sorts of different computers, uh, Enterprise, Project 28, I have no clue what this is, uh, Jupiter Ace, VIC-20, TRS-80, uh, Kimbuino, uh, a lot of different uh, platforms like this. Like a brain fuck implementation inside an Amstrad CPC <laughs> running on SymbolOS. Of course, that's the right platform to do this uh, <laughs> this little challenge. Um, a lot of Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum uh, submissions, some Atari stuff as well. Uh, some stuff for pocket calculators, uh, Game Boy, people running a BBS and they have a basic uh, scripting language for that BBS software. So they make the entry on that BBS software. There were two entries for this thing, which is really cool cool to see um it's like it's so completely geek and 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 like a useless time waster but it's fun <laughs> this is interesting um i'm looking sql server of course you would do this challenge on sql server why wouldn't you um homebrews sp scmp whatever the hell this is i have no clue but it seems to be like some sort of uh terminal um more spectrum aircom 16 i learned it's an hungarian old school machine um the other mutiny thing that i talked about and nes cpc more fantasy consoles i'm looking for one in particular which i will know when i see it it's for the compact for the auric where is it where is it where is it bbc micro 
a lot of diversity as you think and logical made a very cool video going through all of the different entries and explaining the different ways that people did the different tricks that people did uh, for the thing uh, so check out that video as well it's going to be linked on the description below I'm trying to find this last one oh fujitsu fujitsu fm7 which you don't see every day um where is it where is it some stuff for the coco there as well nixon droid i have no clue what the hell this is i think it's, it's an android it's like a version of unix on an android i guess um where is it where is it this one this is what i wanted to talk about so a person made this computer like it's not a replica of any computer it's an analog computer because they wanted to make an analog computer because why not uh, in the shape of old analog computers but it doesn't replicate any of them it's like a new thing that they made just because they wanted to make one so when they saw this challenge they of course they wanted to implement this christmas diamonds challenge for this computer like that there's only one of in the world and this is cool i find this fascinating i find this amazing uh so yeah few other entries you can see the diversity of it a lot of stuff for the pdp different versions as well of uh, pdp which i didn't really know what it was but i kind of uh, got to learn about it by googling it um so yeah some stuff for apl as well which allowed some uh, nice little tricks uh so yeah a lot of stuff i'm not gonna go over all of them uh because there are really a lot of them but check out the video from uh, logic or uh, going through all of them and then there's the there was a wild category as well where you was the same pattern but you could animate it not just you know try to size code it to hell but also do some fancy stuff with it and these have slightly less number of entries all of them are quite little interesting nothing overwhelming exciting but pretty cool um it's just doing some little animations with the stuff this one was pretty cute uh, and some music and rotating and making stuff flash so yeah people who were bored with the challenge of just size coding they wanted to do more with it they had the wild category for that so yeah really cool challenge thank you so much logica for organizing it a lot of entries to submit and go over but i think it was cool and people really enjoyed it i mean 240 submissions for a single competition that's really cool last year already had a lot of entries and this year it seems to be the same so uh yeah really cool challenge so to close things up let's take a quick look at the upcoming demo parties there are still gonna happen in the next few days and weeks uh our sync the halt and last party just happened uh this very weekend that just went through there's still GURP being planned in Sweden for the Amiga, uh, Berlin meetup for the Commodore 64, I believe, Yumalata Winter Farian, they like uh, Farianing a lot already in February, uh, Love Bite is happening in the beginning of February as well, Fjall Data on the same weekend and Mountain Bites on the weekend afterwards, so a lot of stuff happening right in the beginning of uh, 2024. Hope you stay tuned for that. Hope you submit some productions. And if you like this kind of content and found it useful, uh, please share to your friends. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that jazz. And you, if you can afford something, please consider uh, submitting something to my Patreon, patreon.com slash psenough, wherever you're willing to donate. It's very much welcome to keep this content going. See you next video. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great day.